Energy. As the world continues to find ways uh, to produce cleaner energy, a company based in the UAE has just completed its first operational solar plant in Africa. It's called the Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed PV plant in Togo. And for that conversation, I'm joined by Hussein al Nawaz, the chairman of AMEA Power. Thank you very much for joining us, Hussein. Now, I just want to start off. Why Togo? And are you planning any projects uh, in uh, the other parts of Africa? Thank you, Zena. Uh, why Togo? Uh, Togo had, you know, I, mean, I think it's all about leadership. The leadership of Togo have a clear strategy, focus on energy mix, where renewable is a large size of that. We are in the renewable business. So that attracted us. In addition to that, a very clear legislative framework, clear tax structure and tax incentives, clear import duty incentives. On top of that, the demand. There is demand for power. So we saw that as an opportunity. We zoomed in on it. We have been able to succeed. Today, we have 50 megawatt in operation. Mm. We've done it in record time in Africa. I'm proud to say that. 18 mm. months from A to Z. From the day we signed the PPA to the inauguration tomorrow is 18 months, out of which 14 months of, of construction. Mm. Despite COVID-19, despite the challenges the world had in that year, import was closed, factories were closed, manpower wasn't able to reach the site. Mm. Despite all of we were able to deliver a 50 megawatt, which will which is operational now. Mm. We are proud of that. And that also, the Togolese did help. The Togolese government really did a remarkable job in helping us to achieve our objective. Mm. Any other parts of Africa that you are planning to uh, extend to? And if not, uh, walk me through some of the bottlenecks that you are seeing maybe in those other parts. Africa is our focus. EMEA Power is an African-focused power developer. So we are looking at every opportunity in Africa. Today, we are pursuing opportunities in 15 countries in Africa, whether it is east, west, south, or north. And we have about 2,000 megawatt of uh, committed uh, power purchase agreement which we, were, where we need to deliver on. Africa is in need of power. Africa, if you look at sub-Saharan Africa in particular, and the numbers speaks for itself, the, the demand uh, the global average, if I look at the global average consumption per capita, is about 3,300 kilowatt hour, whereas in Africa, it's only 600 plus. So that shows you there is a gap, there is a need, there is a demand. Mm. Out, of, out of 54 African countries, 32 of these countries have an energy deficit. Mm. On top of that, the energy mix is also important. Today, the strategies for power in every country trying to mix the different aspects of energy, whether it is renewable, hydro, gas, fuel, etc., etc. Mm. Uh, Africa tend to be um, about one third of it is hydro, and about I would say 50% or more is heavy fuel, which is costing the money, especially in landlocked countries or they need to transport fuel for a, a large distance. Mm. So renewable is a good solution, solar. They have good solar radiation. Wind is another important aspect. There are some, a few countries in Africa has very good wind resources. Mm. So we are pursuing all these opportunities. Um, we are keen on Africa. We see the demand, we see the opportunities. Mm. Hussein, you mentioned that 32 countries have an energy deficit. Of course, we do know the importance of uh, ramping up uh, the development of cleaner energy on the continent. I mean, what more still needs to be done in terms of polit uh, policy changes uh, to make the uh, environment really more fertile for more investments into the renewables uh, energy uh, sector? Uh, two things. First is easing the laws of uh, in encouraging investors. The, the IPP model and the private partnership model has proven success in many countries, in many parts of the world, and in many countries. Africa need to encourage that. To do that, you need to have tax incentives, 
import duty, uh, import duties incentives, clear legislatives from from work. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So I said enough, enough legislative framework. All of that need to be done. And need to also the, the DFI, the Development Financial Institution of the World, need to come in and support these mm -hmm. initiatives with their financing because no investor is going to provide 100% of their money in one project. There has to be a, a debt equity ratio mix. And the DFI, like IFC, like the European FMO, DEG, Paparco, DFC of America, all of these institutions. Uh, are encouraged to, to look at that. My own country, United Arab Emirates, mm. through Abu Dhabi Fund, has been supportive. Together with IRENA, they have this initiative which encourages renewable and provide soft loans for countries in Africa where they will be using renewable. Togo is a good example. Mm. In our 50 megawatt project in Togo, Abu Dhabi Fund, together with BOID, has contributed mm. over $40 million to our, to our uh, in terms of debt, to our projects in Togo. And they are encouraging renewal. So I think the opportunities are there. Funding mm. uh, are there, is there. Um, one challenge we have faced is time. Uh, mm. I mean, what we have done in Togo, I'm proud to say is remarkable. Mm. Our other experience in other African countries has dragged on and on and on. And it takes time, and time is money, time is cost. Some of the uh, brothers in Africa need to push harder in terms of achieving results faster than they are now. The world Thank is moving you. fast, and they, if they don't catch up, they will be behind. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hussein, for walking us uh, through those projects uh, that you are embarking on to develop uh, clean, cleaner energy in Africa. That was Hussein al Nawaz, the chairman of AEA, AEA Power. Uh, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh